Halo, selamat pagi sahabat Demix. Ketemu lagi dengan saya Fitria Novita di sini dari Demix Indonesia. Jadi kembali saya akan menghadirkan acara talk show bersama dengan pakar-pakar dan stakeholders-nya Demix dalam acara Demix, Demix Talk. Kali ini kita akan berbincang untuk topik yang cukup menarik untuk para stakeholders ataupun pemain mortar instan. Kita akan mengangkat tema, mengusung tema terkait tentang bagaimana perkembangan industri mortar instan di Asia Tenggara dan juga di Indonesia uh, dalam isu yang mungkin yang marak, ya sedang marak saat ini adalah di tengah isu tentang global recession. Jadi dalam episode Demix Talk kali ini, uh, kita kedatangan dua orang guest speaker. Uh, yang satu datang dari Jerman, Uh, Mr. Uh, Ferdinand Leopolder, Mr. Ferdinand Leopolder adalah uh, presiden dari uh, Seatma. Seatma itu adalah asosiasi uh, Southeast Asia Dry Mix Association. Uh, uh, ini adalah asosiasi untuk uh, mortar instan di Asia Tenggara dan presidennya adalah Mr. Leopolder. Uh, Mr. Leo, uh, good morning. Hi. Nice to see you. Yeah. So uh, you come down to Indonesia, uh, come to Indonesia um, just last Yes, night? Yesterday, yeah. yeah. Uh, so how is your flight? Oh, it's good. It's yeah, smooth? Thank you. Thanks you have enough it's sleep? smooth enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No problem. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, uh, Leo juga adalah salah satu uh, founder dari uh, Dry Mix Info. Itu adalah komunitas untuk uh, uh, mortar uh, instan uh, asosiasi nanti mungkin akan dijelaskan secara lebih detail. Uh, selain daripada itu, kita juga kedatangan tamu guest speaker uh, Bapak David AL. Bapak David AL sebelumnya kita juga sudah banyak berbincang terkait uh, tentang uh, perkembangan industri mortar instan yang ada di Indonesia. Pak David AL, selamat pagi Pak David AL. Selamat pagi, good morning Leo. Good morning. Senang, uh, senang bisa bertemu kembali ya Pak. Nice to see you again in this episode sama, because sama. last time uh, uh, Leo we meet uh, and then we talk uh, a lot with uh, Pak David AL because Pak David AL is one of the founder. Um, uh, I, I think he's the one that who is very uh, focused on passionate on this industry yes, because sure. he just uh, he already started like uh, I think. Um, Uh, approaching like 30 years uh, in the development of the uh, instant mortar in Indonesia, isn't it, Pak David? Correct. So, so I call Pak David is uh, Bapak Mortar Indonesia, or in <laughs> in English is um, how to how do I call? It? Is a uh, founding father yeah. of the uh, uh, instant agree. mortar in Indonesia. <laughs> 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 okay. Jadi um, terima kasih banyak. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Pak. David dan uh, Leo, I call you Leo, yeah, yes, without sure. Mister, yeah. Is yeah. it okay for you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So, uh, 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 Leo, um, maybe could you explain and introduce what is Seatma actually, and then maybe uh, the other community that you develop, uh, uh, mm -hmm. drymix.info. Mm -hmm. So, what is the goal of the um, establishment of the Seatma? Okay, um, Seatma uh, was uh, founded um, in 2007 already, mm -hmm. and um, it was founded actually as a Singapore association. Mm -hmm. It's still Singapore association, and it is intended to to unite the uh, motor instant community mm -hmm. of the entire Asian countries, plus uh, plus maybe some some closer closely related countries, and. Uh, What is the idea behind it is to promote uh, uh, mortar technology on a level where uh, all um, the education on the application is important, uh, that the development of standards is important, and the, uh, uh, well, let's say, uh, joint replacement of uh, the uh, existing technology which is actually job site mixing mm -hmm. so these are the main goals of Seatma on the other hand it provides a platform 
tomorrow we have here an event with 80 people uh, coming from all over 80 Asia. people yeah. okay. 85 90 i don't know mm -hmm. let's see who's coming well it's a it's a very serious job yeah because oh, you, it's, you no, it's fun you, yeah it's yeah, fun. yeah yeah <laughs> you yeah. you you come here and then you make all the people uh in the same industry uh yeah. gather together yeah so well, I think it's, it's your... No, yeah, but I would say it's fun. Yeah. You know, I, I meet, I, I've been coming to Indonesia since 1996 mm -hmm. or four, four actually. I've been here even before that as a tourist. And I have many friends here, so it's actually doing these things is fun. Of course, it's work, mm -hmm. but it's fun. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's one of the big functions of mm -hmm. Siadma. And, it, and the, in the background, there is a... Uh, my company, drymix.info, the international community for dry mix mortars that was founded in 2002. Due to the circumstances I missed last year, mm -hmm. 20 years mm -hmm. of dry mix mm -hmm. info. So we'll party next year. Yeah. I, I just okay. <laughs> because okay. last year was not really a good year for party yeah. due to yeah. the pandemic. And um, uh, which is actually the same, has similar interest to unite mm -hmm. the dry mix mortar industry to give them a platform <coughs> to discuss things we have. A, a uh, newsletter that goes out to over 10,000 readers worldwide and uh, we think that uh, this newsletter is being read by actually more like 25,000 people. Yeah. More experts. It's very focused. So uh, when it comes to drymix.info and Seatma and also Medma, Middle East Dry Mix mm -hmm. Mortar Association, it's always the mortar is in focus. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, a niche, but on the other hand, I have grew up in this industry in, in Germany or let's say in the supplying industry and I see the potential not only to build economically and long lasting but also in a sustainable way. Mm -hmm. So that is my hobby. I'm found one of the founders of the Green Party in Germany which is in government actually right now and um, at that time we couldn't comprehend the potential this, this uh, let's say, ecological building will have in the future. And, and so it's, yeah. it's also in my heart. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So, so again, yeah. it's about the passion of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because endemic stuff, we, 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 we are very, uh, very happy because we are in fight and then I meet uh, more and more people that is very passionate about their profession. And then today, I, I also heard it, heard it from you. So I think you are the right person also to talk in our programs yeah okay. so because um, yeah I mean um, uh, many people still don't know what is the instant mortar actually especially in our country in Indonesia but uh, you come from other countries um, uh, from Europe and then you say that you have a Myatma in the Middle East too and Seatma in uh, Southeast Asia it means that the growing of this industry, I think, is is will be very uh, promising uh, market. Is it? Yes. Um, this is not only a statement you can make for Indonesia, but in all, uh, let's say, in the evolution of building mm -hmm. materials, mm -hmm. there will always be concrete. There will be always be yeah. brick. You know, yeah. it's a volume thing. Mm -hmm. But the only growing uh, product group is motor, instant motor, mm -hmm. because. Uh, there's such a huge potential of replacement of traditional technology. Traditional technology. So uh, we must build faster, we must build higher quality, we must build low maintenance, mm -hmm. and all these things um, are uh, enabled by uh, high quality dry mix mortar. Yeah. So uh, this even applies for, for very important markets, but m uh, more even for a all Asian markets yeah. where still we have 60 or 70 percent of um, of uh, job site mixtures mm -hmm. of inferior quality or let's say uneven quality and um, and that's a that's logically going to be growing faster because uh, uh, or I I in a higher degree than mm -hmm. any other um, construction product mm -hmm. you know in the end you also have paint and stuff it's always the same it's yeah. just the space but the mortar is an integral part mm -hmm. between the uh, structural and the decorative yeah and it wouldn't you need it you know yeah. you have, uh, beautiful application natural stone applications uh -huh. and, um, and tile is coming and yeah. tile is getting more challenging to be yeah. stuck yeah. to the wall so you need good mortars yeah so this is growing yeah, yeah. just curious about what happening in your countries uh, 
how many percent of the penetration of the uh, instant mortar compared to conventional job site? Well, the, this is of course, I don't want to frustrate you, but Germany is, I'm sure, 90% uh, instant mortar. Oh, 90%? 95. Wow, well, it's very reverse in, in what in Indonesia, yeah, Pak David, yeah. In All Indonesia, right. I think it's only like 10%. Not, so, mo not more than 10%. Yeah. So how to go there? <laughs> so. uh, it's fun, you know. It, it, it's fun. Yeah, ten yeah. percent is not bad, you know. Yeah. It's already a lot of yeah. mortar, yeah. but uh, another percent plus, ten percent plus will be much more, you know. Yeah. You know it's, it's yeah. A, and it's fun, is actually because it's convincing. Yeah. It's so it's yeah. yeah I, I'm very exciting with this conversation, and yeah. also I I also uh, read your uh, newsletter in the Drymix Info. I think it's like uh, five years ago. Uh, I got the newsletter, and then I think uh, you're not only making like only uh, gather all the people, but you really know what you do, and then you combining you 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 get very um, I mean you screen all the information and the knowledge from many party, and then you combining in a I think it's very uh, quality, it's a very qualified. So I think it's come from the only people that have passionate on the industry and the profession. Yeah, thank you, uh, no, sure. uh, Leo, for your uh, coming and then uh, discussion this morning. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Um, uh, and then Pak David, um, Pak David, sebenarnya kita sudah bertemu ya dengan Pak David di episode yang pertama ya. Jadi kita juga undang, tapi kali ini kita nggak bicara lagi hal yang sama. Tapi kita akan membahas tentang the uh, how is the difference uh, about the developing uh, mortar instant in Southeast Asia, in Europe, and then comparing what Pak David see in Indonesia. Mm. So, kita akan melihat nih bedanya gimana. Karena, um, maybe not only in Indonesia, I think it start like uh, after the pandemic. I think uh, many people has been uh, like we have heard about the global recession will come. Mm. Is it coming yet? Well, or <laughs> what do you think about <laughs> Should I answer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have uh, in all, on all continents, uh, we have some of uh, the uniting factors, which is uh, financing uh, is getting more expensive. So it means speculation needs to be held down. We have in all markets globally, or um, maybe except some markets where you don't have can look into. Uh, we have inflation mm -hmm. um, coming from raw material and labor cost, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the, the uniting thing. Then, of course, the, the situation even in Europe is mm -hmm. totally different. Mm -hmm. We have uh, what I would call a recession in Germany, Switzerland, Austria, and the Netherlands, where we have uh, really. Uh, in the building material uh, industry and especially also in the finishing materials industry like mortar instant um, we have partially 15 to 20 percent minus this year mm -hmm. um, the, by the way uh, minus because 22 was a boom year you know mm -hmm. so that's also talking already about a recession is mm -hmm. difficult because mm -hmm. we had very high numbers in, in mm -hmm. 22 recovering from the covid mm -hmm. uh, crisis uh, so uh, this is relative, but it's definitely a shrinkage of the demand, and it should be called can be called a temporary recession. Well, uh, in Asia things are totally different. Um, <laughs> you have um, you cannot see Asian countries alone, but you must see China, which has a serious yeah. economic yeah. slump, and uh, it's they don't call it like that, but it's a serious recession. It's actually a bubble burst in mm -hmm. the, in the mm -hmm. especially in our field in the construction industry. And um, uh, this will impact on the entire area, availability of capital, um, and uh, inflation, of course, is the same thing. So uh, uh, I wouldn't call what I've seen in preparation of this interview, I wouldn't call that a recession that you have here. I would rather call it a, a McKinsey calls it a deceleration, which is a very polite word, but I think it describes it quite well mm -hmm. because it's the growth is halted in a way mm -hmm. but in germany actually the gdp is going down uh -huh. actually and here the gdps are going up in a lesser degree than before so i don't see any country from vietnam down to here 
having a negative growth in the GDP. Yeah, so yeah. it's more, it's, deceleration is an artificial word, but it's, it describes that quite well. So um, this comes, of course, from uh, still a lot of demand in real estate. Uh, it comes from, in our industry, replacing of mm -hmm. traditional technologies. So I see all the chances, you know, we've, we've had in Germany in the beginning of the 2000s, a 10 year long mm -hmm. uh, slight recession in construction. There was 2 million people employed in construction in 99 mm -hmm. and, and it went down to uh, 890,000. So that's serious. Yeah. But uh, actually in this period, um, Dreimix Mortar actually profited because people started renovating mm -hmm. and then the, the, the percentage of uh, mortars is much higher in renovation. So actually the mortar industry done quite well. We're still in the replacing traditional technology and stuff like that. So I think um, here is, when, when I look from Germany now, it's a rather comfortable uh, mm -hmm. zone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but so. I'm, I'm not in business, so I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, seperti tadi yang uh, Leo juga ceritakan, mungkin kalau di Europe itu di like a country like German is already, uh, the, the economic is uh, going down, yeah? from the pandemic this year, this year yeah. and then also in uh, Southeast Asia uh, kebanyakan negara Asia mungkin masih eksis ya except mungkin China because China is also going to pandemic I think but but I think they will be uh, an expert to mo say it more details than yeah, us yeah, yeah, yeah. Leo yeah yes. what about uh, Pak David say about what do you see in Indonesia because <laughs> I think there's a uh, Leo also know that the what happening in the other country is doesn't maybe is is different what happening in Indonesia sebagai uh, pakar dan penggagas mortar instan di Indonesia and then you already like 30 years before and then I think this is not your first time uh, heard about the the recession if I'm not mistaken you also uh, got into the situation where the market is not there maybe you can tell us more about this your experience is i think uh uh like leo say leo you not in <coughs> is not in the practitioner of the industry but you are the practitioner in this industry what do you see uh, thank you fitria um before i explain more about you, this mm -hmm. so leo you can talk in, in indonesia yeah. Because Not we want me. Indonesian <laughs> guy, Indonesian people know yeah, about yeah. this industry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so allow me to talk in Bahasa. Yes, uh, ketika Leo tadi bilang in uh, Europe itu 90-95% already know about this product. But uh, very different with Indonesia. Indonesia people, Indonesia market is uh, hanya more or less not more than 10% mm. know about the uh, dry mix mortar or uh, instant mortar. Jadi, uh, Indonesia masih sangat challenging. Challenging untuk uh, penetrasi terhadap produk-produk mortar instan. Uh, kenapa? Uh, karena kita perlu edukasi. Kita kalau melihat bahwa Indonesia uh, tentang resesi, uh, sangat beda. Kenapa? Karena di Indonesia itu kalau baru masuk 10% saja and only 10%, not more on uh, uh, on that. So uh, bagaimana kita mencapai yang 90%? Hmm. Not Nin even 90%. I think 50% is good enough oh because yeah, the yeah, Indonesian yeah. 5%, 5% <laughs> 10% more is enough for us. Yeah. But uh, kita perlu bagaimana melihat apa saja yang harus kita lakukan untuk market di Indonesia ya mm -hmm. karena uh, kalau melihat industri players hanya not more than 10 players in Indonesia own the factory for, mm -hmm. for instant, the mortar, mortar. instant mortar mm -hmm. tidak lebih dari automated factory yeah, yes. or mm -hmm. serious plan mm -hmm. serious uh, industri uh, tidak lebih dari 10 players mm -hmm. jadi uh, dengan 10 players ini, tapi yang lain juga banyak. Mm -hmm. Yang kecil-kecil itu banyak. Kecil-kecil itu uh, lebih dari 100 merek, more than 100 brand in Indonesia. So, bagaimana kita 
uh, yang ada yang sebagai pemain-pemain yang serius untuk mortar instan ya saya kebetulan uh, hampir 30 tahun ini di bisnis ini jadi saya melihat bagaimana uh, sangat challenging untuk masuk mengedukasi market hmm. educate market is very important so uh, tapi saat ini saya melihat bahwa edukasi market itu hanya sekali-sekali Insi, uh, not continue for edu educate the market mm -hmm. only one time show the uh, educate the market and then stop but you know the market is uh, need continue to educate okay uh, Pak David uh, in the relate to recession um, <coughs> so do you think Indonesia will affected by the okay. global recession talking about because the I heard you also uh, you ever tell me the story about the when the uh, crisis in Indonesia in 1998 right mm -hmm. so um, Pak David is remind remind me mm -hmm. talk uh, um, today is not the real recession for him mm -hmm. because He has experience about the when the market is stopped mm -hmm. under yeah. 1998, right? I remember, mm -hmm. yeah. And then <laughs> maybe you can tell us more about it. Yeah, compare compare to, to 1998 and and, and today, now. Christian. Uh, yeah, because in Europe, uh, Leo said that I think is is about to. Uh, I think it's already going down. Yeah. Is it? In certain Europe. markets in Europe, yes. Yeah, and yeah. also in China after the pandemic. Yeah, China is maybe like yeah, in Yeah, the inflation in rate is up yeah. and then yeah. the market consumption is going low and yeah. then it's effect to the economic. So what do you think in Indonesia? Compared with 1998, very different. Mm. 1998 until 2002, uh, no market. Tidak ada market. Zero. Mm. We cannot do anything so just the plan the factory uh, already there but we cannot do anything because you cannot market produce zero uh. is zero but now is a uh, very different market now is uh, uh, you know talking about recession in Europe uh, the market is going down around 15 or until 20 percent mm -hmm. but in Indonesia because that only 10 percent uh, market know about this product so still 90 percent and in a in a in a in a national um, I think is uh, for now Indonesia is still growing uh, almost five percent yeah as per yeah. <coughs> this quarter mm -hmm. yeah. so untuk kita di Indonesia um, Bagaimana untuk mencapai 90% itu? Jadi kalau menurut saya, kalau kita melihat kompetitor uh, brand itu, brand A, brand B, brand C, um, kita tidak boleh menganggap itu kompetitor. Itu itu friend. Friend how to do educate the market together. Hmm. It's more important than think about their competitor. Yes. Yeah, so kita kita harus merangkul mereka sama-sama untuk bagaimana mengedukasi market. Mm -hmm. So market makin besar, tentu potensi untuk kita dan masyarakat tahu tentang produk ini juga akan lebih Because bagus. Because the market is still huge, ya. Ninety percent. If you see the development of the instant mortar from 1998, from you say zero. Zero demand, you can say it zero demand because the, all the property is stopped at the time, and then coming up to now. Uh, do you think how is the market growth of the instant mortar in Indonesia? Is still growing or S uh, still growing? But you know, uh, the player in Indonesia, in Indonesia, according of my view. Um, They are, sorry to say, yeah, sorry to say, but the players, uh, according my view, is uh, they are just follow what happened in the market, what happened on the on the uh, job site market. 
um, they, they, they just follow, you know, um, majority of them. So uh, according me, better think how to educate more various product and then uh, bagaimana membuat supaya market itu ta tahu lebih banyak tentang produk apa saja sih yang harus dipakai. Ketika orang membangun suatu dinding, mereka hanya tahu tentang perekat bata ringan. Tapi bagaimana melakukan plesteran misalnya contohnya ya. Plesteran masih menggunakan job side mix. Hmm. Itu sangat hmm. tidak direkomendasi ya ketika sudah pakai batanya modern tapi plesterannya masih job side mix kurang tepat. Seperti orang makan roti itu dengan gula merah. Orang makan roti itu must be used mentega, margarin. Butter. Butter. Hmm? Bread and butter. Bread yeah, and yeah. butter. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, when you talk about education of the market, it's uh, maybe too general. Uh, I'd say it's education of the developer and the final buyer, you yeah. know, that you see <coughs> what quality they, they, uh, they exp can expect. And um, and there, because um, these people are paying for it. And when I said before, we want to be efficient, we want to be super quality, we want to be low maintenance, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And low maintenance is one point, you know. If you yeah. buy a flat <coughs> in, in Dubai Marina, and the next day or one year after, all the tiles are coming down in the bathroom, um, you have maintenance and you have a big mess. Mm -hmm. Because normally repairing is three yeah. times more expensive than doing it right the first time. Yeah. So. Uh, I think the target group must be high-level talks in in uh, developers, in, uh, uh, in real estate people. Sorry, uh, talking about developer, actually, 15 years ago, developer itu the, the, the developer is very, uh, you know, very interesting about this product. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. But now. Okay. <laughs> They back, back to oh. conventional way uh -huh. because there's lack of education, I think. Well, it's yeah. 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 Because so no there's no growth. Yeah, uh -huh. no growth. So uh, talking about the contractor, uh, talking about the developer, developer uh, just said that they they give it to recommendation to uh, contractor to decide. Mm -hmm. they, they doesn't care. This is a. Uh, this is not uniquely uh, Indonesian problem. It's, uh, oh, it's happened also it's in your countries. Not in, uh. Maybe not in Germany or in, uh. in very, let's say, uh, where you have a high percentage of uh, mortars being produced <laughs> in the factory. <coughs> but it's in al almost all countries. In the US, you know, you, well, you, why don't I can mix that stuff? Why uh. is it? Uh, it's, it's cheaper. People mm -hmm. think, really think it's cheaper. It's oh, not yeah. cheaper, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, when you, we made a calculation together with, uh, actually with MTech, you know, this guy, Stefan and all these yeah. guys. Um, in India, about 10 years ago, and the uh, automated job site was 400% uh, plus efficiency, and it was cheaper than uh, making the job. It's very, in, in India, job site makes it very popular, you know. And, um, and we used it, the labor cost then, for the low, low, low income labor in, in on mm -hmm. construction side, uneducated people, and this wage has doubled in the meantime, you know, because of inflation, because of the uh, general expectancy. So the calculation always comes out good for dry mix mortar because it's really cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. better and it's cheaper, yeah. you know. Yeah. But the people must understand why they p uh, pay for 25 kg bag. They pay uh, I don't know the price mm -hmm. here for for good tallities of. Uh, they pay this because it'll work, you know, it'll do a beautiful job and they must understand this and they cannot, they must admit that they cannot do it by hand. Mm -hmm. and this is the problem when you have a calculation guide and uh, you hear this all over the world, yeah. you know, like, oh, cement is so cheap, sand is so cheap, I get from the river, you know, yeah. and yeah. I, want to, I don't want to see the mortar they're making with this. They can't make a good mortar, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's education here, right? Now. Yeah, so I think the what happening in the, the other country, in Europe country, is so different with what, what we face in Very Indonesia, yeah? yeah? Because um, uh, Leo say 90% of and the... 95. 95% already know no. about the no. instant mortar, yes. while in Indonesia no. only 10% know. Mm. So I think if Leo say in the global recession is already affected the industry, 
but in Indonesia, I think it's more opportunity for us mm. to grow as long as we can do the education Still in the right day. way. Yeah. Oh. So what I heard also from Leo, <laughs> Leo say uh, also what happening in Indonesia about they try to reduce the cost and then they can do that. And then they try to also, uh, I think the, the industry of the instant mortar in Europe is more mature. More mature. And now they yeah. are going <coughs> to, uh, to the next phase <coughs> of the industry while in Indonesia is just the beginning. Yeah. So, right. so maybe you already have a standard of the instant mortar product in Europe and then but we are in Indonesia, if I'm not mistaken, we are still fighting for the standard uh -huh. of the global, <laughs> uh, for the local standard even, yeah? Well, yeah, there's a, so. there is local standard in mm -hmm. Indonesia. I don't know the number, of, I think, for plastering and for mm -hmm. tiling. Uh, but uh, standard is, um, uh, we have ISO, for example, in Dubai mm -hmm. and in Saudi Arabia. If we make the Arabian translation. There's an Arabian translation if you ever need it. But it's enforcement of the standard that is, plays the role. So the industry is asked, if they have the tool of the standard, mm -hmm. to to make to promote mm -hmm. actually the standard and mm -hmm. say this is in accordance with uh, standard Indonesia yeah. SI so and so many, uh, and differentiate from non-standard product. This is a chance for for the industry. But of course, may, um, we will learn more tomorrow about the standards <coughs> yeah. uh, from from Ruslan. and. Um, uh, I think this is a permanent process. And installing a standard is very difficult, and uh, some success was here done in Indonesia, but <coughs> enforcing it or making it known to people and making it a condition for specification on a job is, an, is the work that the industry has mm -hmm. to use these tools or improve the tools. If mm -hmm. the standard is no good, add to it, you know, become active. Um, I view the standard also as a, um, an assurance of a quality of a certain product, and I think um, there's a lot of work not yeah. only in Indonesia, all yeah. over the place, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I say uh, Dubai is since, since, uh, since 2008, it's ISO 13007 for child adhesives, and still many municipalities, amongst them Dubai municipality itself, uh, have not made this mandatory for their own jobs mm -hmm. so that government could make a standard for Nusantara project for example you go by standard in Indonesia you don't don't let the contractor decide product has to conform to the mm -hmm. standard so that will be a push yeah you know that it's kind of a um, a dynamic you say oh I, I, in order to get a job in on, uh, on Nusantara um, I need to comply with certain standards for natural stone adhesive for mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And like yeah so we started yeah. yeah, but David, uh, what is your <coughs> uh, your view about the how is the development of the instant mortar from now and then up to next year maybe? What do you think about it? Go in Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, yes. Bicara tentang I understand. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bicara tentang development in Indo di Indonesia. Uh, future future projectnya itu seperti apa potensialnya seperti apa what do you think about kalau it? kita bicara tentang sekarang mungkin karena uh, politik isu mm -hmm. ya politik isu karena next next year itu uh, election ya pemilihan presiden jadi memang uh, situasinya orang pada sibuk ke politik tapi buat kita karena marketnya still you so besar kita kita menurut saya tidak terpengaruh ya mm -hmm. karena uh, residential area uh, real estate landed house tetap dalam pembangunan mm -hmm. seperti menjadi target daripada developer developer kalau saya bisa bicara dengan yeah. mereka ya diskus yeah. dengan mereka mm -hmm. gitu ya developer tetap bangun mm -hmm. cuma high, ri high rise building yang <coughs> agak berkurang mm -hmm. ya karena mungkin juga agak sedikit uh, apa sedikit oversupply ya mm -hmm. terhadap apartemen terhadap office space mm -hmm. itu mm -hmm. oversupply tapi uh, bicara tentang landed house semua orang needs landed house mm -hmm. because during the pandemic also uh, most of the habit of the end user and mm -hmm. customer is a bit changed 
because they can <laughs> now work uh, from the from from work, work from yeah, home, yeah, yeah. work from everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So <coughs> I think uh, I think that's make the the trend switch. Or it is also happen in Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is about housing, I understand a little bit what you said. Yeah. Um, you are in a phase here where, where you have an evolving middle class that want to have their own house, yeah. want mm -hmm. to move in the house. Yeah. So I see the growth area in individual houses or mm -hmm. terrace type housing, not so much in huge uh, shopping mall projects and things like that. We have the same thing in Europe. It's a very <laughs> strange situation. We have an undersupply of 400,000 flats per year uh -huh. in Germany. You know, okay. there's a big demand of living space. Of course, we have uh, influx of people from outside, and uh, uh, young people want their own flats. But in the moment, they cannot build the flat because mm. it's so expensive. Ah. You become the labor cost, the materials cost. You can't find the labor. Uh, so we have a very, co a very different situation. Although we have the same thing, the people want to have their <laughs> own cocoon. You know, including the home office, yeah. including yeah. the super dollar. Uh -huh. whatever you know yeah. yeah so it's a similar situation but i think indonesia has all the chances to just build on this yeah. and, uh, yeah. in germany it's yeah. in the moment yeah with all the environmental regulations quite difficult to build new mm -hmm. so. and also a government also do like uh, did some like uh, policy to uh, we just heard that uh, i think just recently we heard about the ministry of economic or ministry of economic in <coughs> indonesia also do like a um, uh, do like a subsidize the the, the, tax. the residential the tax, uh, yeah? the tax. so it help yeah. I think it's help a lot and then it will make the uh, the growing of the our industry is even more I think yeah, uh, yeah. if I'm not mistaken also uh, during the pandemic also most of the building materials industry in Indonesia is still grow yeah. So I think it's so different. Yeah. So, yeah, been, so, so there's a lot so of challenge for yeah. us and opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> opportunity when and also there's still a challenge for us. When to the go. Ministry of uh, uh, Trade, mm. trade. Uh, give the incentive, uh -huh. tax incentive. Tax incentive. So the, the um, developer in Indonesia, for the, especially for uh, uh, landed house, mm -hmm. they are supposed to build as fast as possible mm -hmm. until next year uh -huh. to finish the project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so talking about that, continue effect about about the uh, res re re residential and then about the product. Yeah. Uh, sangat challenging untuk kita terhadap produk motor instan untuk edukasi di market. Untuk yeah. edukasi market, yeah. untuk melakukan secara kontinu itu paling penting. Bagaimana mengedukasi market supaya uh, mereka tahu bahwa ini produk yang berkualitas, quality of the product, and then uh, less maintenance, uh, the you know if you look that like uh, our neighbor Singapore. Mm -hmm. The building in Singapore still good year to year. Same weather. Yeah, <laughs> same like in Europe, right? Yeah. But in Indonesia, still challenging to how to educate them for the market mm -hmm. know more about mortar instant. Mm -hmm. Very challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but still optim optimistic. Yes. But the market is there. But it's for sure the <coughs> challenge is again is education. education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Educating so Indonesia market. and maybe Southeast Asia is still a big opportunity to grow, right? Yeah. So we are in the right track of the industry. Yes, I we say. hope we hope that everything is going smooth and then as long as we focus on what we try to put uh, try to uh, catch, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I think Talking about the educating the market so uh, you cannot do by yourself. Yeah. We are sure. together. Yeah. Doing the educating. Yeah. Oke, okay, sahabat Demix ini topiknya cukup menarik karena saya mengangkat dari dua sudut pandang yang berbeda, apa yang terjadi di uh, negara lain di Eropa dan juga uh, Asia Tenggara. Uh, juga kita berbicara tentang apa yang terjadi di negara kita sendiri di Indonesia. Jadi um, ya dalam kesimpulannya memang terjadi perbedaan 
di antara kedua negara, di antara dua, dua area yang berbeda ini, di Indonesia yang masih sangat besar marketnya, tapi tentunya juga challenging dalam hal mengedukasi dan karena orang belum semuanya mengerti dan edukasinya masih on and off, tapi kemudian kalau di apa yang tadi Leo juga sudah sampaikan, kalau di luar itu sudah penetrasinya sudah sampai 95% ke atas, Uh, tapi challengingnya lebih ke makroekonominya juga berpengaruh karena memang uh, tadi isu uh, uh, recession bukan lagi isu mungkin yang terjadi di luar tapi memang sudah mengalami uh, isu. Jadi bagaimana kita di Indonesia, bagaimana kita juga yang berada di industri uh, mortar instan ini, uh, ya kita sama-sama berjuang bagaimana kita juga fight untuk uh, the grow in uh, the market grow of our industry ya. Yeah. So uh, uh, kita harus juga uh, bersama-sama karena pekerjaan untuk mengedukasi ini uh, adalah bukan pekerjaan satu orang, bukan pekerjaan satu company, dua company, tiga company, tapi harus uh, integrated dari semua pihak. Jadi uh, tapi dalam topik poin hari ini yang kita dapat adalah bahwa industri mortar instan itu masih sangat menjanjikan, hmm. walaupun dalam isu yang mungkin dibilang isu uh, resesi global. So, uh, Leo, uh, you know the differentiate between uh, what happened in Europe country and then Asian country and also uh, in Indonesia. So, are you still excited to do this business? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't go away. I learned a lot today. Also in the interview, I learned yeah. more. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And you have to be, uh, what well, I'm saying, you have to be curious mm -hmm. and intrepid. So you have to to be uh, to be nosy and to to be in a position to try to understand. And on the other side, you have to be uh, intrepid, meaning uh, you have to have stamina. Yeah. That's the third thing. You have yeah. to stay there sure. and then and, uh, and it'll be good. So that's my, my summary. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, positive. Yeah, I'm not yeah. negative about Germany. Something will happen. Yeah, yeah. It will happen us, to anywhere. Uh, yeah. It will happen to anywhere as long as we are focusing on what? As long, I mean, as, long as the fundamental hmm. is strong, yeah. I think we can go. And then, yeah, it's only also different. What I heard about Pak David is more goes into the how to make it into reality because uh, mm -hmm, yeah. he is he is the one that who really know how to switch the end customer point of view how to make them believe that the um, instant mortar is uh, is the right choice compared to the uh, conventional job site mix yeah so yeah. i think we learn a lot too from Pak david today Definitely. and yeah. then we also uh, learn a lot from uh, what <laughs> happening in in the other country because uh, it can happen to anywhere. Mm. It, uh, it can also happen to Indonesia. Yeah. It can also happen to even China. We, we happens. Yeah, it can happen. happen. So, yeah. so we have a, uh, we need to do like, a, a have a strong foundation, fundamentals, and then focus and passionate, yeah? Right. So yeah. thank you so much for this discussion, uh, Leo. Uh, nice to see you. Thank Tomorrow you. we'll see together. Yeah. So we'll be the don't worry, the moderator. We change the role. Change the role yeah. You, so I'll be the speaker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it will be it will be fun. Yeah, okay, it will be much. fun. Yeah. I'm very honored to, to uh, that you invited me. I'm thank you so honored. much. Thank yeah. You. And then Pak David, uh, terima kasih banyak untuk waktunya. Jadi uh, sekian dari uh, the mix talk episode kali ini. Uh, before we end the discussion, um, I don't know whether you know our. Greetings in Demix. No. We have like, mm, this is Demix, yeah. this is Merekat Kuat. Okay. You know what this Merekat Kuat no, means? No, sorry. It's a strong bonding. Okay. So, oh, it's, like so it's strong bonding is means for our uh, product have mm -hmm. to be strong bond yeah. and then for our relation with our stakeholders. So yeah. we can do and educate more intimate. So, okay. So I'll, I'll teach you how to make the uh, Salam Demix. Okay. Salam Demix. Merekat kuat. Merekat kuat. So if I say salam demix, merekat kuat. Okay. Okay. okay? So and then we go, uh, yeah. and then we end the yeah. session ya. Yeah? Oke, okay. uh, Pak David, sama-sama juga ya Pak. Baik. Tentunya Bapak udah hafal banget ya. <laughs> <laughs> Oke, okay. uh, salam demix, merekat, merekat kuat. kuat. Thank you so much, and then see you next time. 
Uh, oh ya, yeah. ada salah satu lagi yang saya mau share. Kalau untuk teman-teman Demix yang mau tahu lebih lanjut tentang Demix, bisa mencari kita di www.demix.co.id dan juga Instagram at Demix Indonesia serta YouTube at Demix Indonesia atau uh, call center di 0811 193 9900. Terima kasih banyak dan sampai ketemu kembali.